Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, all of my slides will be available online. Um, so, if you need it after, just take it. Um, so, who am I? I'm a uh, grand fee of La Torre Mendel. Uh, as you know, perhaps I speak French as native language. Uh, so, this talk is in English, not in Flemish. Uh, you can find me online on Twitter, on Mastodon, uh, you have my email, on GitHub, GitLab, whatever. Uh, and I'm working on Moniz. Uh, Moniz is a Belgian company uh, for meal, electron, uh, eco, logic, and uh, gift voucher with a small card. You pay like a credit card. It's nice. If you have a Sodexo or uh, Eden Red, you should move to Moniz because it's Belgium. So here we are. Um, and I'm an open source contributor. Uh, by contribution, it's mainly uh, development and documentation because I like documentation. <laughs> it's an exception in <laughs> for, for many developers, but I like really like documentation because an open source project without documentation almost not exist, so it's important to have it. Uh, I also give ID, and for now, the two main projects I'm on it is uh, Atom, so I'm not neutral in this presentation, and um, OWA is a nice set of uh, library. You should look at it if you never look at it, because it's very nice. And uh, I do also some contribution to other projects, but not my main focus. So, unit test in PHP, because Atom is a unit test framework. I will speak about unit test. So, who do unit test in PHP? Okay. We use something else than PHP unit. Okay. <laughs> what do you use? I use PHP stack. Okay. Um, Behat. Okay. So, um, Behat and PHP spec are not really focused to be yeah. unit testing. It's yeah. more. It can be in parallel with uh, some other unit tests. Uh, and it's also very interesting. But yes, we have PHP, but there is a lot of other unit test frameworks. So we have Paydot, that is a bit slower. You have the oldest one, simple test. You have LAM, you have CAN, you have Story Player. I put conception, but it's not really because it's PHP units extended. And you have Atom, and you, there is a lot of more. So just don't focus on PHP unit or Atom or whatever, because there is other tools. And if there is other tools, it's because there is other paradigm, there is other way to do stuff. So just let's. Uh, be open because it's very important to discover these tools because sometimes even if you come back to PHP unit you will discover a new way of doing stuff and this is very important but today I will speak about that so the main motto is simple model and intuitive unit testing framework so I don't try to make your life simple when you write and you read tests. And we try to make everything simple, if it's possible, because sometimes you have limitations. And um, we have some kind of uh, rules that are more strict on some points that make some people dislike us or like us. Um, um, I will try to show during the presentation some stuff that Atom gives to you. So from out of the box, <coughs> you have uh, test isolation and parallelization. So you have tests that run fast, because if you can run multiple tests at the same time, you win times. And they are isolated. So uh, the failure of one test doesn't um, change something on another test. It's very important when you run unit tests then some change inside your environment, your context, doesn't change any other test. 
And this is why uh, it's something that uh, is very important for us and uh, that we are proud to have it out of the box. Uh, and we have a mock engine. Of course, uh, you can use Mockery if you want, but it's not really integrated. Uh, I prefer our own, but sometimes you don't have the choice. Example, if you use a Laravel and you want to mock uh, something on a facade, uh, you will be uh, mandatory to use Mockery. You have a uh, virtual stream to mock file system, and you have uh, some other features. So, so first, let's look at tests. So we have our classes here that we want to test, and here is a test with two ways of writing it. So you have the first way, it's just basic, and then you have the second way that is more in the storytelling uh, style that people like or dislike, it depends. Uh, and it depends on the, the kind of project you are. So it's quite simple. We have a function uh, method. I'm returning a bool that return a bool false. And we want to test it. So first, inside your uh, unit test, you will create a new instance. Atom will match the class you want to, uh, to test because we have the same namespace A and B and the same class name, so it will be auto uh, match. So you don't need to write new C or whatever, you just write this new testing instance. And uh, you make some assertions, so you first test that the output, the return value of the method is a boolean, and then this boolean is false. Or you can write it in this way, this given in your tested instance, asset you will to false, boolean, blah, blah, blah. So this given and asset do almost nothing, even do nothing, just something that are there to help you writing a test that is more readable. And the assets do some stuff, uh, resetting some. Uh, uh, mock access count if you have a uh, mock and you want to be sure that you access only to a method once you will uh, and then you have several tests that will uh, call method that will access to it several times uh, an asset we um, reset the counter to, of the access to it but it's also um, Play, display the message when there is an error. It will uh, say there is an error on the test we return false with the error. Um, you have question on it? Or on no, seems clear. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I plan this, but the most important when you are using Atom is to have test and unit inside the namespace because it's the way Atom match uh, your unit test with your class. So then we remove this part. So where it can be there or there, whatever, if we remove this part and match that the namespace A, B for this one and class C for this one. So we have some structural keywords, this given, this let, define, if, and when, then, that can help you to write the storytelling mode. Um, it's very useful when you have a project with a lot of people, or we, when you are doing an open source project, because it makes the test more readable. It's a bit useless when you write, and I don't like to write this kind of test, because it takes more time. But uh, when you re-read re them, it makes it more clear because you have, you know, okay, this is where I define everything, this is where I do some stuff, and this is the real part. So, because uh, it's important when you do unit testing, uh, you want to use the tools, <coughs> there's some configuration. So in Atom, we have three configuration files. The main one is the .atom.php file. 
that will be run once. We have the bootstrap.atom.php that we run on each test. And on each test, it can change a bit following the execution engine we choose, because uh, Atom has three ways of executing tests. It can be a way more like PHP Unist, so each test one after one, or several change. Uh, honestly, except some specific case, I never changed the, the engine, but it exists. Uh, and also, one important thing, it's inherited from the parent directory. So if you, I don't know, you want to display a logo at the end of all your unit tests in your command line interface, and you don't want to make it inside your project, you can put the a configuration file inside the, your workspace, uh, .atom.php, and it will be taken uh, by the um, the framework, the unit test framework, or I don't know if you want to activate an extension, you can do there instead of contaminating the, your project. And if you don't use Composer, you can change the way the class are loaded with a dot .autoloader.atom.php file, or if your autoloader, um, the autoloading file from Composer is not inside the vendor because you changed the configuration of uh, Composer, you can uh, say include these files instead of the normal one. Uh, yeah, and most of the configuration of Atom can be override by uh, command line arguments, but because the configuration files are in PHP, you cannot override everything. So there is some limitation. And one thing that is very important, almost you, you will almost use it only on the starting of the project, is the verbose mode, because it will display some nice stuff like where all your uh, configuration files are, which uh, unit test files will be loaded to, to run the test, etc. <coughs> Without the verbose mode, you will don't you will never see these parts of the so these parts of the, uh, the display. Um, yeah. Okay. Here is an example of the configuration file. There is a lot there, but the most important part is probably this one. So that say uh, load the test from this directory. The rest is for reporting, is for uh, saying we want to enable branch and pass coverage for uh, the code coverage part, or to use uh, telemetry or whatever. So the rest is <coughs> it's nice, but uh, it's the most useless if you don't need it. So, um, asserters. So this is the asserter. So an asserter is uh, like a um, superclass with a lot of possible assertions. So this is the assertion, it's false. And an asserter will make an assertion of the value on this that is um, Boolean, and then the value is false, it's another assertion. So we have a lot of asserters because um, before uh, PHP 7.0, uh, it was not always as clear as possible that which kind of value is returned, which kind of value we try to add, and testing it, make sure that your class is coherent, um, uh, in our, our, um, the FDB view yeah, that you want to add, so um, just making asserts and say this is the value. We all know that if a class return one or return a string or whatever, if you make an equals with true, it will be always true. <laughs> but uh, in fact, if you want a Boolean, you want to be sure that it's a Boolean. So just using this kind of asserter, make sure that your code is stronger. 
And um, a fun fact, uh, in the GLP project, it's a project to um, manage a computer inside a, a park of computer. Uh, and have statistic on them and have uh, reporting saying there is an issue or whatever. Uh, they use Atom and um, because they use that kind of asserter, they find uh, a lot of issue and uh, some are security issues. So this is very important. So uh, I take always the Boolean because it's simple, but uh, you can have several ways to do it. We saw <coughs> the parentheses, and if you use a parentheses, you can put some string. When there is an error, it displays it. Um, so nothing complex, it's uh, pretty the same than every thing other. And there is also some synthetic sugar. So if you have an array, you use a lot of array in PHP. So you can do something like this. So you can make some assertor, integer, or string on the key of your array. So if you have foo and bar, you can use this there. And then write is equal to the value you want. Um, we have some aliases to make sometimes more clear for people that is identical to is not the same as is equal to. And if you want, you can write it this way. It's a, it's a, a choice. Um, honestly, I don't find this more clear than this, but yeah, sometimes uh, people ask for it, so we have it. And the most important, you can create your own alias. So uh, to create an alias, you need to write this inside the configuration file, inside uh, the bootstrap of your unit test class, uh, and say, OK, I have an assertor I, uh, with this assertion, and I want this alias. So if you want string, instead of writing is equal to, you want to write is you can write this. So it's easier, but yeah, it's fun. But uh, yeah, it depend, really depends on your project. The interesting part is if you want to translate it, it's possible. Uh, yeah. So if you want to handle exception, uh, you don't put a, an annotation on the unit test. <coughs> you write this anonymous function. So you write this exception, the anonymous function with your call. And then you can assert on the um, exception that will be true. So that's the message. If it's uh, the correct instance, the correct code, whatever. And uh, <coughs> this is exactly the same if a function make an output. So if you have a function that will echo something, uh, you can write it this output and do the same. Because if um, function method um, do not put during a unit test with Atom, it will be considered as an error. So it's not normal that you have something that is displayed to the screen that are not uh, catched by the unit test framework. So I hope you are still there. It's not too intense. Uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Now I will speak about mock. So um, when you do unit test, you always mock something because you need to inject some objects, some classes, some interface inside uh, your unit your uh, unit test. Yes, uh, oops, sorry. Um, so yes, uh, mock are complex by nature, and in Atom we can mock almost everything. Um, I never meet something that I cannot mock except if. The, the, the thing that I want to mock are not mockable because the code is uh, like with a lot of private and you can not do anything. 
So, uh, yeah. when you create a mock run, we don't care about this. But uh, here is the way you can create mock. So, you have four ways to do it. So, the most simple is this one. You just uh, prefix your fully qualified name uh, of the class with the namespace mock and atom create <coughs> mock. Or you can, if you use PHP Storm, for example, it will say this is not exist, it will be an error, or whatever. You can use this uh, syntax, so new mock instance, you pass the class, the arguments, and it will create the mock. I like this one because it was my first contribution to the code of Atom. So <laughs> and if you want to make something more complex, like changing the namespace of the mock, uh, changing the name of the class the mock generates. You can use this syntax or the same with new mock instance. It will be exactly the same. So, if you look at how uh, Atom generates a mock, it will globally have a template and fill it with a lot of stuff and then evolve the big string to create the mock so it's a virtual class. And a class like this will be mock with something like this. So uh, you have your namespace mock, and then you will see that you have the same um, signature and you have the call to the parent. And of course you have some stuff that say, okay, this method was called, etc. but the idea is this. Um, if you want to make uh, your mock empty, like with no call to the parent, you have this method that you can call before creating your mock, shun parent uh, class calls, that will make no, um, no call to the parent, and the signature will be keep the same. I insist and present this because it's something that uh, a lot of people say it's not clear, it's not easy to uh, understand how, how to do it. Uh, so it's why I insist a bit on it. Um, if you want to change and make no not, not the same signature, so remove the arguments inside the constructors, it's something that we do a lot. You have profiles, so it should be the same. So if you want to change the behavior of the mock, because it's something that is very important, uh, you can write it something quite simple. So this calling mock, so the variable that contains your mock, and when you call the method foo, you will return this value. Or on the third call of the foo method, you will return this value, or the Full method will throw an exception, and of course you can make some assertions on the method that are called by the mock. And there is a lot more example inside the documentation, of course. If you want to mock an interface, it will be the same. So you want to mock con table, you mock con table. Uh, mock constant, it will be this. So you have this constant, the actually Russian ID and say, this is this one. Nice, one, nice version. <laughs> uh, if you want to mock a native function, you will just write this function, file exists, equals true. And when your uh, metal dot config file will uh, call file exists, it will uh, return f uh, true, even if the, the file doesn't exist on the file system because uh, the engine will override it. And all the engine override it simple by uh, playing with namespace. So it's a simple trick, but uh, yeah, it's a nice one. If you want to, uh, to inject a simple mock inside a test method, you can just write, I want a mock of something, and uh, say, OK, I foo my interface inside my uh, test method, and Atom will inject it. Uh, like if you write new full mock my interface. But if you want 
to have a mock that are more complex with arguments inside the constructor, etc. You will use a data provider. I will not speak about data provider because I speak a lot about it. Um, but uh, it's inside the computer. And it's quite easy to, to write. So if you, have ma if you make assertion, you make uh, some mock, you can do pretty everything on you can make some reports, so code coverage reports. Uh, you have fun report with uh, Santa or Indian Cats. Uh, it's unit report, whatever. Uh, so uh, basic report, it's not captured. But no, we don't have uh, the n non, uh, non stuff here. But uh, here is without pass coverage. This is with pass coverage. So pass coverage um, is when you have uh, a block like a condition with an if. Uh, if you enter inside a if or not enter inside a if, you will have two different scores with the pass coverage. But with uh, without pass coverage, <coughs> you have a score that is less speaking. So because we see on the the same uh, class we test the same exact uh, test. We see that we have uh, 40, uh, 86 percent uh, of coverage, and then we see that uh, it's not totally the case. In some cases, there is less uh, coverage. So sometimes, because you have an if that you don't test if the if is true or false, then you don't go there. So um, this is very interesting to see it, and. Um, here there is only one class, but you can click and go deeper <coughs> and see the code coverage, etc. Um, there is also a nice um, platform called Telemetry that is online, but you can install it on your infrastructure if you want. Uh, when you run tests, you can send automatically the scoring of your test, and then you have a nice graph, you can play with it. It's fun. Um, so, now I'll do a short demo, because it's always interesting to see some running code. So if you have, I don't want code coverage, I just write the, uh, dash ncc to no code coverage, uh, because code coverage takes times. So it is here I have uh, some uh, <coughs> code to cover. I will show it a bit later. And then if I remove the ncc, it takes a bit more time, but then I have my scoring. Um, so. I can also make some, I don't know if it's, uh, this is readable for everybody, yeah? yeah. Okay, uh, I can make some filter uh, on the, on the file I test, so I can say, okay. So I can say I will run tests on this file, but I can also filter on the methods I want to test. And can say, okay, I want to test on all the, the classes. Okay, so and say, okay, I will run only this uh, method. So it runs only one method because I say run the method test precision. So you can filter. You uh, if you use some annotation, you can uh, put some text that say, okay, this uh, will be uh, required run when you use this text, and you can write some test to say uh, some um, argument to say filter and run only the 
the tests that have this test. So this is not really the most important part. So like I said, there is the verbose mode, and if I close my mouse, I can say, okay, in the verbose mode, I can see that I have a configuration file that are on the, in the top of my uh, directory, and then I have the configuration file of the uh, project. And inside my this is the configuration file on the top I add the logo so the big code and if I remove it and then I run my tests I will have removed the code so just to say it's an inheritance uh, Care about this one uh, configuration file. Yeah. Close it. Uh, so I have uh, this class with a lot of stuff there that do almost nothing, but it's just for the fun. Um, and I have my unit test there. So you see that the namespace test unit is there. So perhaps we zoom inside it. Um, and I do, I do a, a lot of tests. Um, what's important there? Um, I don't remember what to say about this. Uh, unwrap. What is the unwrap? Uh, this is this one. Uh, oops, sorry. So uh, uh, you have the number class and say, okay, I want the value of it. Uh, no. But it's not. Uh, I don't remember what <laughs> I want to show with this uh, demo. So uh, maybe the control. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, so here, I will reopen my configuration file. Here. So here, I don't have the pass, the branch pass uh, coverage enabled. <coughs> so uh, I run all the tests. So if I go to the then uh, check the reports. Um, let's go to the root browser. So I have my reports here. Then zoom in. So I don't have the pass and branch coverage. I say there is this scoring. I can go inside, see a normal report, no number, <coughs> but yeah, it's a report. And then if I change and enable the branch and pass coverage, and I must say uh, it can uh, make a sec fold inside its debug. So uh, if you see <laughs> sec fold, just disable it. <laughs> I hope it's working. <laughs> so yeah, I run it. So uh, I uh, it takes a bit more time. So you see uh, 72 seconds instead of uh, this scoring. And the report is different. So you have a better uh, view on it. The same global percentage of co coverage. And um, you see that the branch and the pass. I don't remember exactly the difference between branch and pass. Uh, but the most important is that you see there is a difference and that you must do more 
uh, code coverage on it, uh, and you will see a different color for in it's a branch or a path. Uh, if you use a tool like Infection, I don't know if people know Infection. Just you. No. So Infection is a tool that um, when you run your unit test, for now it's not compatible with Atom, it's only compatible with PHP unit and another one. PHP spec. PHP spec. Right. Um, it will uh, change some parts inside your code. And um, typically, if you have a nice pass and branch coverage, it will um, make more uh, less error inside infection because you cover more of this. So it's nice to have this code. I don't know if uh, PHP init implemented it. I don't know. Okay, uh, because it's there from uh, from a while. Uh, but yeah, so very interesting to see. So this is the part we cover, so see that we are good, but yeah, we can do better. Um, so I want to say else, uh, because uh, this is to play, but yeah. we don't care about it. You can play with this because the code is online. So, <laughs> um, so but this one. So let's get back on the talk. So I will show you some key difference with PHP units. Uh, it's the difference that uh, people say to us. So uh, it's not something that uh, I check. Uh, so it can evolve with the time. Uh, but yeah. So we have a um, test uh, on uh, the type of the variable. So you see with the asserter about Boolean, string, uh, whatever. Uh, so it's very interesting because it keeps a lot of potential bugs. Uh, we have a mocking system that is far more complex than the basic one from PHP unit. But a lot of people use mockery, so it's not a uh, very good comparison. Um, we use Crozier to output exception. Uh, we have multiple execution engine. For, like I say, we have out of the box the parallelization and the isolation, but you have also uh, some way you can deal with uh, an execution like a PHP unit, but also it still have isolation. And uh, the last one, I don't remember. Uh, I think it's a mix between the, the both stuff, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit complex to understand it. Uh, I know that, for example, once again, GLP uh, don't use the, um, the default one because they have some issue with it, uh, but they are very complex in the unit test, and they, they do stuff that most of people don't do, so. <laughs> Uh, because of the parallelization, uh, it's faster, very faster than uh, PHP unit. Uh, so if you have a lot of tests, it's very interesting. Uh, we have free end interface, uh, so everything is chainable. It's very uh, pleasant when you write it. Uh, we don't have the add dependence. Uh, so for them who don't know it, it uh, allows you in PHP unit to inject the result of a uh, test uh, inside another test method. Um, we first namespace and class name because it's the way we are working, but you can configure it. So if you don't like it, you can change it. Uh, you can change the namespace, so if you long want to use uh, PHP Limburg instead of uh, test unit, uh, it's possible. Um, and uh, by default, it's very uh, far less permissive, so you cannot do uh, bad PHP with it. Uh, so if you do bad PHP, you will have um, hard time when you write your unit test. 
And I know uh, when, when I speak with other developer that when there is some issue to write your unit tests, it's most of the time because you have bad architecture uh, <coughs> back the, the code. And sometimes you don't have the choice because it's your framework or whatever. So yeah. And we have nice syntactic sugar. Uh, I find it pleasant. And um, we have an extension that is still in beta because it's still in development called PHP Unit Bridge. So theoretically, because for now uh, I think there is only 30% of um, um, feature of PHP Unit that are implemented, you can uh, take your PHP Unit um, test change some uh, stuff like the extend part and I think it's almost and perhaps the configuration file and then it will run with Atom. Uh, this was developed uh, as, a, as a, an ID uh, inside uh, Automatic, the company um, back uh, WordPress uh, to migrate some of the tests to Atom. Uh, it was a test, then it was stopped for now, but uh, normally they should come back on it. Uh, I don't, I should take uh, some words with the, the developer that tried it, but uh, it's interesting as a concept. And feel free to use it and to make feedback because uh, most of the time on Atom, we don't have enough feedback to say, okay, it's the good way or the bad way. Um, you are integrated in a lot of tools or in a lot of uh, framework if you want to use it. So uh, if you use Symfony, you have a bundle to use Atom uh, with Zen2, with FZ Publish. Uh, we don't have one with Laravel yet, but uh, one day probably. Um, yeah. That's nothing. We have extensions, so the plugins from uh, PHP unit, as uh, we said in principle. And you have a website with all the ones that are referenced. Uh, it's quite easy to install because you only need to require uh, one with uh, Composer. Uh, and sometimes you need to configure it because uh, if you use, uh, I don't know, um, I don't have one <laughs> in my head, but uh, yeah, the Prosper one is uh, uh, an extension that uh, allow you to generate uh, unit tests uh, by some annotation on your class. So you don't need to write your unit test, but you put some annotation and then you have a unit test that are generated from it with uh, random data. It's quite uh, nice. Uh, you need some configuration for, to use it. Uh, some nice configuration that uh, I speak about is visibility. By default, uh, when you create a mock, uh, you, you don't do anything with uh, your um, private and protected method. Then with visibility, you can do stuff. Uh, JSON Chima is to validate uh, a JSON with uh, Chima. <laughs> Uh, ruler is if you have a lot of unit tests and you want to have some very complex filtering inside the configuration or uh, on the command line to say, okay, I want to exit this test and this test and this test, but not this one. Uh, it's a nice one. Uh, IDE helper is um, one that uh, when you run your test, it will open your uh, ID with the um, the file, the file with the unit test that fails. Uh, for now, it doesn't work with Docker because I didn't find a way to make Docker communicate with my my host. But uh, yeah, uh, Auto Loop is a nice one. Uh, so by default, Atom call uh, come with um, loop mode. So when you use dash dash loop on Atom. Uh, when it executes and meet um, a test that fails, it will stop. You write uh, the fix, then you push enter, and then it will run the fail test and continue. Um, we 
this auto loop, it uh, listen the change on your file system and then detect that you uh, make a fix inside your, your file and then it will run automatically the, um, the unit test. So very nice uh, to have it. I don't know if it's work on Windows. So, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and there is a lot of more extension, like the VWA extension, that make every test pass. <laughs> um, we have a nice documentation because I rewrite it a lot. So if you find issue, just put an issue, say it to me, whatever. Uh, if something is not clear, say it. And um, almost every of our uh, test or code test are uh, validated by Rusty. Rusty is a tool that uh, check your documentation. When you have a block of code, it will say, OK, it's uh, syntactic valid or not. So if you have a, a you forget some arrow, you forget some uh, point, whatever, it will say it. So uh, normally you can take a test, copy paste, it should work. It should. <laughs> um, yeah, and to say I speak about it, dash dash loop, I speak about it. Uh, if you want to filter on namespace, you can use uh, dash ns for namespace. You have the dash dash debug that are um, uh, very helpful. So inside your unit test, if you want to var dump something, don't use a var dump, use this dump. Uh, and with debug mode, it will be displayed, but without error. Because I if you output something in Atom, it will make an error. Uh, and yeah, there is a lot of more. So questions, if you are not completely broken because I say too much. Ready to try? <laughs> yes, yeah. it's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's hard to uh, speak about the tools like this. Uh, so it's hard to know what to say because uh, I do almost no PHP unit, uh, unit test. So for me, it's hard to to say what's important, what's not, uh, what is true, what is false. Uh, so give me a feedback. I will enjoy it. Uh, or you can tell it. <laughs> um, and thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, you can feel free to stay a little bit more, ask questions. Uh, I, I definitely will. But I forget, but if you want stickers, there are, there are stickers. Um, I'm also going to put in also here actually uh, also other stickers from meetups and maybe a couple of technologies as usual. So feel free to grab any of those. I think we actually have some automated uh, uh, stickers. Maybe, maybe. We um, next month we're going to have a meetup around. <laughs> Next month, around the month, we're going to have another meetup, also here in Costa Campus, hosted by Sekeka, and also with another new speaker. So I hope uh, I can I can see you there, uh, and um, we'll stay in touch. Thanks for coming. <laughs>